Hernias, also called ruptures, are one of the commonest surgical conditions that patients can get. They come in all shapes and sizes, but in essence, the problem is a weakness in the abdominal wall muscles through which something is poking. Take the analogy here of a football. Now obviously in the patient, this would all be covered by skin. But here you can see the outer casing has split and the innards are poking through. Exactly the same as what would happen in a patient with a hernia. Anyone can get a hernia, male or female, young or old, fit or unfit. It's usually caused by the muscles of the body wall being weak from birth or weakening with the passage of time. Alternatively, the body wall can become weaker by excessive strain from coughing or heavy work or sport. Nine out of ten hernias will occur in the groin, as you can see here. But hernias can also occur through a weakness in the tummy button or in the space between the tummy button and the bottom of the breastbone. They can also occur through an old surgical scar, and we call those incisional hernias. There is one other type of hernia called a hiatus hernia, but that's a very different sort of hernia, and we won't be discussing that in this film. What actually happens? Well, there is a real hole in the muscles of the groin, through which the blood supply of the testicle and the sperm tube come on their way down into the scrotum. There's a roughly equivalent arrangement in women, but groin hernias in women are a lot less common. Now this hole is normally the size of about a pencil lead, but if it enlarges and there's enough pressure from within, something can come out through the hole and appear just as the hernia does here. How do hernias present and what happens when they appear? Well, basically, the patient will notice a lump in the groin. Now, in this case, you can see it's really quite substantial. In others, the hernia swelling may be really quite small, and in some, the patient may not even notice a swelling at all. Usually, however, there's a degree of discomfort. When the patient lies down, the hernia very often disappears completely. But when they exert, such as in coughing or straining, the hernia usually gets bigger. Now sometimes patients will remember the first time that a hernia actually appeared, but in other cases it may creep up on them over weeks and months. But the important thing to remember is that once a hernia appears, it will never go away. How is the diagnosis made? Well, to be honest, it's usually pretty obvious the patient complains of a swelling in the groin. But sometimes they complain of some discomfort, and it's not until the doctor examines them and asks them to cough that they can then feel what's called a cough impulse. Very occasionally, the diagnosis is suspected, but you can't prove it until the patient has had an ultrasound scan. Are there any risks to having a hernia? Well, obviously, it can be very inconvenient if the hernia continues to get large and it can become quite troublesome. But the biggest risk, and I do want to stress this is very rare, is that the hernia can come out and then get stuck and won't go back in again. That can then interfere with the flow through the intestine as well as the intestinal blood supply. And if that happens, an emergency operation would be needed. But this is a very rare phenomenon. What are the treatment options for somebody who's got a hernia? Well, of course, you can decide to leave your hernia alone, not have it treated. There is a small risk of obstruction or strangulation, but your surgeon will discuss that risk with you, and it may be the decision will be made to just leave it for the time being. In days gone by, there was a device called a truss or a hernia belt. This was a device used to keep the hernia in place inside but it didn't really work very well and it certainly wasn't very comfortable. And because nowadays there's almost nobody that can't have an operation, the use of trusses has largely been abandoned. Nowadays, as I've said, surgery is very safe. And for most people, it probably is the best option. Welcome to the day surgery unit. This is where you will come on the day of your operation 
where you'll arrive at reception and be greeted by one of our receptionists. During the next 15 or 20 minutes or so, we're going to ask you to sign a consent form. Now this is difficult because at the very time we're trying to instill confidence in you, we're also having to tell you about some of the things that could go wrong. Complications are rare, but please be patient with us because it is important. So having checked in, you'll be brought into a room like this. It may actually be a bay with four beds. But here the nurse will ask you some questions, you'll meet up with the surgeon and the anaesthetist, and you'll be prepared to go in for surgery. Just a word of warning, we will be asking you the same set of questions several times. This is part of our security checking process. Please bear with us. This is the anaesthetic room where you'll come prior to the operation itself. In this room will be the anaesthetist, an anaesthetic assistant and maybe one or two other people. And we'll just go over the same checks that we've made before just to make sure that everything is in order. You'll then be given the anaesthetic before going through into the operating theatre itself. Welcome to the operating theatre. This is where the operation will take place, although of course if you have a general anaesthetic you'll be asleep at this point. Now I'm very grateful to Brian, who's a patient of mine who had this operation done about six weeks ago, who's kindly come along here to be my model. In terms of hernia repair, back before the 1990s, it was really quite a major operation in the sense that we repaired the hernia by repeatedly putting loops of stitches around, like, like Grandma used to darn socks. It was a good operation, but the problem was that because everything had been tightened up, the patients got a lot of discomfort, and when they moved, it really hurt. Furthermore, we had to tell them not to do too much in terms of physical activity for at least six or eight weeks for fear that it will all tear apart again. And that, for a working man or woman, was really quite an imposition. Nowadays, we use a plastic mesh. These meshes, made of nylon, are very strong. They are put in under the skin to literally keep the hernia in place, a bit like a patch on an inner tube that's got a puncture. The tissues grow through the little holes in the mesh and it's very strong and we don't need to tell people not to do things for the first few weeks because it doesn't matter what they do, they won't be able to disrupt the repair. And furthermore, because nothing is tightened, the patients really get very minimal pain compared to how that used to be. Brian has had an open hernia repair and you can just see the length of his wound here. But there is another way of doing it and that's with keyhole surgery where instead of that one long wound we make three little wounds. This is keyhole surgery using a telescope so the surgeon can see inside the body and the repair is done from the inside. The surgeon looks at the screen like this as to what is happening. Now with a laparoscopic repair we still use mesh but in this case, the mesh is put on the inside of the muscle as opposed to the open repair where it's put on the outside. But it's still a very strong and good repair. Not all patients, however, are suitable for laparoscopic repair and your surgeon will discuss with you whether they feel that the operation should be done as an open or a laparoscopic one. Once the operation is done, and it usually takes about an hour, you'll be taken back from here to the recovery area and then back to the room where you came from. The nurses will then look after you, making sure you're comfortable and prepare you for going home. Most patients get home on the same day. Sometimes we have to ask patients to stay in overnight, but that's rare. Care of the wound and the dressings. Now this bit's important because when you get home you'll need to know what to do with your wound and your dressings and when you can do things like swim. Now, when you go home, you'll have a white dressing over the wound like this, and you can bath or shower on day one. When you do that, however, this white dressing will get wet and you won't be able to dry it. So having bathed or showered, what I'd suggest you do is to gently peel it off, leaving behind the sticky strips underneath. After that, you can continue to bath or shower, but don't rub the wound because otherwise the sticky strips may well come off. I wouldn't suggest you swim in a public place for about a week, but almost anything else in terms of washing is allowed. After about a week, if there is a stitch, that'll need to be removed at your GP surgery. Otherwise, you can just peel off the strips and hopefully the wound will be nice and dry. If you get any sort of ooze from the wound at all, it's quite in order to just dab it with a tissue, but if it goes red and hot and looks angry, you may well have an infection, and then I would suggest you go and see your GP.
One of the things people are most interested in is how quickly they're going to recover after a hernia operation. Clearly everybody's different, but I think you might be pleasantly surprised to find out what might be possible after just a few weeks. Brian, good to Hello. see you. Hello, good how to see are you? you. Oh, yeah, I'm good, nice thanks. Nice to see you again. I want to ask you, how yeah. was it after you got home? It was good. I mean, discomfort and, you know, a bit of soreness. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I went home and I suppose I sat down for about an hour in the, uh, the armchair. But, you know, it was, it was a bit sore, so I told my wife I'd go up to bed and lay flat, yeah. which was much more comfortable to, you know, get yourself flat on the bed. And uh, I had a couple of paracetamol and went off to sleep and the next thing I knew it was time to get up and make the wife a cup of tea. <laughs> but it was good, yeah, I, yeah, no problems at all. I didn't even wake in the night. So. How long was it before you actually played bowls, Brian? The following week. The following week? Yeah, yeah, on the Monday, which was a week after the operation, the Monday afternoon, I, uh, I did an hour session, just a one session, yeah. and called it a day. And I think stuff. I could have got on, but there was still a certain amount of soreness there, tenderness, because sure. I'd had the, uh, I put the, the dressing off, I'd still got the stitches, but that evening I went back to my surgery and they'd removed the stitches. Excellent. And you remember I said to you, what will happen when you get home is that people will try to wrap you in cotton wool and they'll mm. say, don't do this, don't do that. Oh, no. And well, I had well, said to you, yeah. you know, you must try and get moving, get yeah. active. And you did that and Well, my wife you found did a bit, you know, she says you mustn't do it. I said, well, no, you can't just sit about. <laughs> I said, uh, I kept on the move. But, you know, I didn't do anything with any lifting of any sort, you know, yeah. other than a cup of tea and yeah. eating your food. But, you know, no, nothing strenuous. And okay. I didn't drive. You told me not to yeah. drive, so I didn't. Well, uh, we usually say don't drive for about a week because yeah. insurance may be. An well, issue. that's right. If it's, uh, uh, but after that, if you you know if you feel comfortable yeah. and safe to do so, yeah. then that's great. When you went home, did, did we give you extra painkillers or did you have some at home? No. Well, we got paracetamol, which is. Did you have anything else? No, nothing else. No, right. I didn't bother with anything else. Sometimes we give people something a bit stronger yeah, a bit than stronger. paracetamol, yeah. and what yeah. we say is, look take the painkillers for the first couple of days even mm. if necessarily you don't necessarily need mm. them or feel you do yeah. because that way you don't allow pain to get no. a grip and then you're you know you're on a roll well so. I say I just took them the one night on that Monday night Fantastic. and that's the only painkillers I took what problems can occur after a hernia operation well firstly pain every operation carries a risk of some pain with it we try as hard as we can to give you pain relief during and immediately after surgery and we will send you home with a good supply of painkillers so that you can take them regularly when you're home. Most pain is easily controlled that way. Sometimes you can get pain uh, for a man in the testicle for a little while but that usually settles. As with every operation, bleeding can occasionally be a problem. A collection of blood can form underneath the skin and look like a bulge and occasionally it's necessary to let that out. Usually it solves itself. In a man, the bruising can go down into the scrotum and penis. Again, it will disappear with time. Skin numbness. It's not uncommon to get a little area of numbness around the wound because we occasionally cut a little nerve that supplies that area of skin in order to stop the nerve becoming trapped in the mesh. If you do get that, the size of the area will diminish over time and it's very rarely a problem. We need to be always aware of the small possibility of infection after a hernia operation. If the wound becomes red and inflamed or even exudes a little bit of pus, certainly you would need some antibiotics to sort that out. Only very rarely would another little operation be necessary. Modern ways of repairing a mesh are so good that recurrence is really very small. It's probably less than a 2% chance that a hernia could recur after five years. Very occasionally, the small artery supplying blood to the testicle can get squeezed or damaged during a hernia repair operation. If that does occur, the testicle will shrivel up to an extent. It's a much more common thing to happen when you have a recurrent hernia repair, but it's still a very unusual thing to happen. Very occasionally, chronic discomfort can occur whereby an area around the wound can be chronically uncomfortable. Now usually, if it occurs, it can respond to a series of pain-killing injections. Only very rarely is it necessary to go and remove the mesh in order to relieve the problem. We're always aware of the possibility of a deep venous thrombosis in your legs after any sort of surgery. 
We take precautions to avoid this by using leg stockings and we ask you to become mobile and walk around as much as you can after the operation in order to avoid it. It is a very rare occurrence. All surgery is potentially dangerous and can cause injury to other parts of the body. With laparoscopic or keyhole surgery, there is the added very small risk of internal damage to organs such as the bowel or to blood vessels, but it is very rare. Because complications following hernia repair are so rare, we don't usually follow people up after hernia surgery. But if you are having difficulties or your GP would like us to see you again, we would of course be only too pleased.